This special NFL Draft edition of Hey Fightin' Podcast, Road to the Pros, is brought to you by Community Coffee, bringing people together over great tasting coffee for over four generations. Discover your favorite blend at your local grocery store or visit us at communitycoffee.com. All right, good to sit down with Kerry Vincent. Kerry, welcome back. It's good to see you, man. It's been a while. Great um, to be here. What's, what's the last year been like for you? Because you were, you were one of the guys that in this this weird, tough season had to make a decision in the fall to, to step away and, and opt out and, and start preparing for your future. And it's funny because I remember in like February or January of last year being an admin and you walked by, I was like, what's up, Carrie? And I was like, I was like, are you, are you coming back? Are you, are you staying? I was kind of messing with you. You're like, oh, I literally just tweeted that I'm coming back. No doubt. And, and then obviously everything changed after that when COVID hit. So take, take me into that, that moment where you've got to make a decision on what you're going to do after you've already made a decision on what right. you're going to do. What was that like to go through that process? Um, first off, it was obviously difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, not being being able to compete and uh, play with, with the team this season. But, um, you know, at that point when I made the decision, you know, n- nobody was sure if there was even going to be a season. Yeah. But um, it was definitely difficult, you know, having to watch the team compete and play from afar. Um, but it was also beneficial to me, uh, you know, taking a season off. Like I was telling uh, Emily, I've played football – I started playing football in 2007, all the way up until last year. Hmm. I I didn't had a season there consecutively. Never yeah. missed a year of football, um, so that was definitely different. I say like a culture shock, but um, I say it was beneficial as well because I I mean being away from the game, I learned a lot about myself. It also made me appreciate the game a lot more. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm even um, that's good for me during this process. I'm I'm more hungry for it. You know, uh, going heading into the league is like an extra push, more motivation. Yeah. How would you watch a game? Were you just like sitting on the couch, like with your family watching games? Um, yeah. So I, I actually didn't leave. I was still here training with Ryan okay. Clark. So um, yeah, I really just sit in my apartment and 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 watch the games with the guys and, and be coaching from from the couch. <laughs> so that was that was pretty cool. It was different, but it was cool. We I just had Ryan on a, a different podcast that I do, and he's he's got so much wisdom, man, and he's he's fascinating to talk to. What was it like working out with him, a guy that? I mean, knows the ropes and knows what it means to succeed at the next level. Um, what was it like to spend all that time working out with him and, and kind of – a lot of people, it's a fast process, right? The, the football season ends, and then they've got three, four months to get ready for the draft. You had more time to work with. What, what was that like working with him and kind of taking your time and, and figuring out how to best prepare for this moment? It was definitely beneficial. You know, 13 years in the league, two Pro Bowls, I mean – who would I, I just became a sponge. Yeah. You know, just soaked in everything he, he had to offer me. Um, you know, with the mental and the physical aspects of the game. And uh he's I'm I'm real grateful for R C. You know, uh we're grateful to have him in the area and still be able to, you know, come and get his get his hands on these guys and be able to help them through, you know, him being and going through every level, you know, the guy the the position that we're trying to be in, you know, he's been there at every level. So, um, you know, he's he's very beneficial to the players and uh, and I, I, he's very beneficial to me as well. When you start the preparation process and as it develops and goes on and gets closer and closer to the finish line, where's your focus been? Like a lot of these guys, I've asked them kind of physically where they're trying to get. For you, like the speed's always been there, right? So it's, right. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's about refining that and making sure that 40 is as fast as it can be. But big picture, what's kind of been the focus for you on, okay, I've got six months to get ready for the NFL, NFL draft. Here are the things that i got to get better at, work on, improve. So – I mean, of course, you to to play in – first, to play in the SEC, you got to be, you know, physically gifted, mm-hmm. but of course, for the league. But um, I've been more so working, you know, mentally. Hmm. I feel like, uh, you know, like I said, taking that time away from the game benefited me. It's, it's benefited my mental. Uh, I've got to really find out who I really am. You know, being away from, from the game for, for six, seven months, you know, you – I'm doing something different, doing stuff I, I never did before. Yeah. I'm having a lot of free time, but um, I've, the game is, is – it's just as mental as it is physical. And um, I've just been working on, you know, meditating, putting my mind in the right spot to, mm. to make sure that, you know, I'm – I am already know I'm – I know I'm physically ready to go. Yeah. Uh, but I just know that when I'm when I'm locked in in my head, you know, I'm focused on everything, that I feel like I, I can't be stopped and I, and I can do everything to the, to the best of my abilities. So you picked up a meditation practice? No doubt. How, how did you develop that? Who did you pick it from? Did, was there someone kind of being a mentor in that role that said, hey, this is what I do – it can work for you, or did you just kind of stumble just, upon it yourself? Just, it's, I definitely stumbled upon it myself. It's just going through, uh, like I said, going through different emotions. Like um, like I said, I'm so used to playing football every year. When you're on a football team, you're around 60, 50 yeah. guys every day yeah. interacting. 
Um, me, I wasn't a part of that. I was I was home by myself most of the time. Hmm. As I told you, I was still here. Um, when I wasn't working out with RC, I was at the house by myself. Yeah. So that was that was different, like a culture shock. So I um, was it hard? It it was definitely hard in the beginning because it was new for me. Yeah. Something I never been through before. But um, like I said, I, I I worked through it myself, and I and I I pushed through, it and I feel like it was something that I needed. Yeah. And I'm and I'm grateful for it. I f- I feel like um. I'm remembering a conversation I had with Shelly Mullinix and she was, I think it was after one of her yoga classes and I was doing an interview with her and she was saying that, um, the defensive backs were the ones who needed yoga and meditation the most because their mouths never stopped running and their minds never stopped running either. Was that the same for you? Like, I know you love to talk and everything, but is your mind kind of racing as fast as, as you, as you run? Like you have a, a brain that always races and you had to figure out how to just, control that and master that part too yeah she couldn't have said it any better you know everybody knows i'm a talkative guy i always speak what's on my mind but yeah. um, it, it is like that my, my my mind was always racing uh moving a, a mile a minute hmm. and um like i said you know taking that time away i was able to 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 focus like you know get let's think about this let's do this how is this gonna help me yeah um it's and like i say man i said it once i said it again like i'm just most grateful for it it's, it's really what i needed yeah what what do you take away from this place um this place was was good to you in, in the sense that, I mean, you, you won a national championship. You're here at the precipice of, of your next dream. I remember talking to you, man, before the Fiesta Bowl, and you had just lost your father, yeah. right? And you were there, and I could tell in that moment, like people deal with grief in different ways, but I could tell in that moment, like almost like Steve Ensminger the next year, the football team and the football field – was a solace, right? And it it was it was the best place for you to be in that moment, for Steve to be in that moment. And then I, you know, I think about national championship. I think about all the things that you accomplished here. What do you what do you take away from this place? More than anything, away from football, away from everything else, that this place and that the people here have given me is love. Mm. And, and as a as a as a student athlete, as a kid coming into you know co- to college, you know you don't. Many people don't say it, but that's that's really what you want. You just want to go somewhere where people truly appreciate you, truly care for you. And um, I knew that I, I knew that I was loved here way before my father passed. But yeah, that was just the that was the the icing on the cake. The you know how they embraced me. You know, and like like I like I told everybody during that. You know, being around those guys is what helped me get through that. Yeah. You know, if 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 it wasn't for that game, I don't I don't know if I would have been able to cope with anything. Hmm. But that's 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 what the, that's what I can take away. This man, they they've loved me. I since from the time I came here from Texas, yeah, a, a foreigner basically, <clears throat> they've taken me in as one of their own, and uh, that's why I'm forever LSU. You um you have a special connection to this place in in more than one way because you ran track here as well, right. and I was I was thinking about that earlier and how the two sport athlete is 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 such a hard balance to to strike. Like I I don't think people have any idea. They don't. Um. So I'm interested in that, and then I was also just thinking like how I saw the track team is the the men's and women's are, are both number one right now. Right. I mean, you you know, it's a two part question. One, just the struggle balancing that and trying to do both, and how that made you better. But two, like you were surrounded by elite athletes on both sides constantly, right in the in the football locker room. But then you go over to to the track and Bernie Moore, and there's just superstars over there too. So what did those two questions? The trying to balance it, but also just being surrounded by so much greatness. So balancing it. Um, for for the average Joe, can't handle. It. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. But um, you know me coming from that background, doing that in high school. Yeah. Um, it was I was somewhat used to it. Uh, in high school I didn't have to do spring ball here. I did. Yeah. Track yeah. and then still had to participate in spring ball. So um, it's really just big <laughs> on like you know maintaining your body, staying healthy. But uh, you know the guys in in, in both training rooms helped me. The guys and women in both training yeah. rooms helped me with that. Um, made sure I was always straight. Yeah, you need ready. you needed a break. <laughs> you no needed doubt. a season yeah. off. <laughs> no doubt. But um, yeah, and the being surrounded by elite athletes in both rooms, I, that's just that's that's I've always that's that's what motivated me. That's yeah. what pushed me. Yeah. Because everywhere I go, I want to be the fastest. I want to be the I want to be the best athlete. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's competitive. It, that's the, it's just the competitive nature, and, yeah. and of of course, there's always gonna be somebody faster, stronger than you. But that's the that's the push. That's what makes it fun, you know, being able to compete with those guys. I'm practicing with these guys. Yeah. I'm I'm practicing with with the with the best pole vaulter in the world. I'm yeah. running next to to, to 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 Terrence uh, Laird, who's the number one uh, 200 meter guy in a, in the country. Sub twenty. Right now. Yeah. Like, come on now. So, I mean, what more do you want? 
Then I then I, I'll leave track practice and I'm going here. I'm I'm covering Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I'm covering Jamar <laughs> Chase. So like, what I mean, what what else do you want? If if I'm an NFL GM, I'm buying your pitch right now. Right. That's pretty. That's a pretty strong pitch. Um, when when you were when you were running track and, and then coming over to football, you talked about the competitive nature. Um, running track, who were the guys that really pushed you over there? That I mean, just well before I ask you that. I know you won a national championship, SEC championship here. Would you would you win with track? You won a four uh, by won, four? We won like two we won You were in the four by four or four by one? Four by one. We four won by two one. SEC championships. Yeah. Um uh, recorded the ten fast the tenth fastest time ever in the four by one. Uh we unfortunately we didn't get to win a national championship dropping a stick at the at Yeah, the yeah, that's right. League. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, but uh I had some big accomplishments on the track team. Who who was on that four by one with you? Uh myself, Akani Hislop, uh Corian Mosby, and Jerron Flournoy. So who who are the guys over there that that push you? You mentioned Mondo, but like I imagine you come out here and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna speak for you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you line up against any LSU football player, you're gonna win a foot race. Um, am I am I correct there? Yeah, no doubt. Okay, <laughs> but track who, who was who was pushing you over there? Believe it or not, it was the, it wasn't the guy that I was running with. It was the dude that was starting and stopping at the time, Benny Brazil. Um, him being a, a former football player and track runner he knows as well. How it goes, yeah, man, on me so tough. Yep. Um, never let me slack. He. He seen in me what I didn't see in myself, and he pushed me, and he made sure he got it out of me every day, every track practice, every meet. And he he won national championship in both. football and track. In both. Xavier Carter was here. Won, I mean, he broke all kind of records. I don't know. Did he? Did Xavier Carter win a national championship in football? I can't remember what the time frame was with Xavier Carter. I know um, he won a hundred. Yeah. I don't know if he won. I mean, I he set so many records. I, I could look it up after. I'm sure there's somebody listening right now is yelling. Of course, he was here. I don't. I don't remember when Xavier Carter was here, <laughs> no but doubt. he was. He was incredible, but you know, you you kind of just made the pitch for me right there. But when you're talking to NFL GMs or you're talking to scouts or whoever, and they're saying, "All right, Kerry Vincent Jr., why why am I why am I taking you? What am I getting in you when when we pick you?" And I, I mean that from both what you just talked about the competitive side, but also as a football player because you played nickel, corner, safety. So what? what it, yeah, what are they getting? You know, bef- before we even get to the the, the physical aspects, you getting you getting that energy from me. Uh, I'm pretty sure you got anybody here in this program, the staff players. I always got the energy. I'm mm-hmm. always gonna keep every. I'm, I keep everybody uplifted, mm-hmm. um, just because I know that's what you. That's what you need in a practice in a game, because things are not always easy. You know, we we faced adversity many times. Uh, my last season, um, it's really about you know keeping guys up. That that really you know gives them that push. You know, yeah. when guys mess up. If you know you got somebody behind you that's just with you right or wrong, that just makes you wanna you know get that that grit that makes you wanna go more and then. Man, in the versatility, as you said, the ability to play almost every position in the secondary, not even almost every position in the secondary. Yeah. Um, doing that at I do it, I did that at the highest level. Um, SEC, it don't get no better than this. Close things to the NFL. So it's that simple. All right, the million-dollar question. This is going to air after Pro Day. What are you running tomorrow? 40? 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. We'll see you tomorrow. I love it. I love the confidence. I, look, I, I don't doubt it. When I, I was asking all these guys to, to pick a trait – and I, I could ask you the same question, but I basically said, hey, look up there, look at all those faces, pick one trait and build the perfect prospect. And I'll do the same thing for you. But every, everyone had a different answer for everybody, and then it got to carry Vincent. And, all right, speed. You know, I want carry speed. <laughs> so th- th- they're, they're in unanimous agreement. But do, this, do the same. We'll do the same, the same game that we've played. So what you want me to do? Let's start on the left okay, with, with Tori. And I want you to take one quality from okay. each guy that you would use, either steal for yourself or like if you're like – and create a player mode on Madden, and you're like, all right, I'm building like the perfect player, and this is what I'm taking from this guy. So okay. start with start with Tori. Okay, Tori, fearlessness. Yeah, guys, <laughs> just pure fearless. You watch yep. him on film, you see that. Jamar, whoo, that guy has so many traits. Um, Everyone said that. Everyone has been like, I don't know what to pick from it's Jamar. Not, it's, <laughs> it's, like it's, a it's really bag. not much that he can't do. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's a trait. I'll just say it's strength. Yeah, uh, dude, that's, that's that's just one of them that I take built, from. Built like a running back. Um, Jabril, he has he's a he's deceiving. He has like deceiving speed. He's yep. the, he's a deceiving athlete. Yep. Um, great athlete. So I take I take that. Um, from Terrace, what I take from Terrace. Terrace just he's smooth. Terrace. He just <laughs> Terrace. he just makes everything looks easy. Yeah, he does. Like he he does it like effortlessly. Yep. Um, so I take that uh, his his ability to make make things look easy. Um, uh, Racy. <laughs> Racy's energy. Yeah. Racy's energy is unmatched. Yeah. Uh, I think practice, you're the second person to say that. Practice, games, pre-games, uh, energy unmatched. Tyler Shevlin, 
I already took strength from from Jamar, so um, <laughs> you can only, double up on strength yeah, if you need to. He got a lot of that. <laughs> he got a lot of that as, as a big boy. Jacoby, um, Jacob, I I'll say versatility. Jacoby is, yeah. is also played. Jacoby started playing offense. People forget that Jacoby was a receiver. Oh yeah, when we came here in 2017, so he was playing receiver. He got some reps at that. So played he's a little H back too, no doubt. Um, of course, speed for myself. Yeah, and then from Zach, um, I just prayed that I get that old one day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's intentionally why I've set it up to where Zach's last. Week. I pray that I get that all. <laughs> save save the punchline for last. Carrie's great catching up with you, man. I'm looking forward to to watching you take the next step in your career. It was a pleasure to have you here at LSU. Pleasure to have you on the show today, and good luck moving forward. I appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you.